guys, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrialsguru.com. So yesterday I did the video where I was answering the question of whether someone should go to med school or whether they should start, uh, let me turn down the music, whether someone should go to med school or whether someone should start uh, their own research company, whether it be a CRO, uh, an SMO, a clinical trial site, uh, and then I got another question, and I, I've gotten this question often, and I've usually uh, answered, I usually get this question through phone call when people call me, 949-415-6256, call me for any consulting needs you may have, um, or just if you have random questions. So I get this question a lot via phone, not surprisingly, um, how much can you make in clinical research as an owner, as an owner of uh, your clinical research company? And the answer is, just like in any other business, you could lose money, you can lose a lot of money, you can lose a little money, you can break even, you can make a little money, you can make a whole lot of money. It really boils down to what you want to do with it, what your skills are as an entrepreneur. Are you a natural go-getter? Are you able to implement systems and build a team and see your vision? And look, I work with tons of people, tons of sites across the country who are not looking to become millionaires. They're looking to just have a lifestyle business, make six figures a year, comfortably working on their own schedule, having a system work for them. I'm all for that too. My first, my first five years in the industry were all hustle. Me basically doing everything. My next five years, which I just am getting out of now, was more laid back. Like I was focusing on different projects. I became a realtor. My businesses were still running for me. So I've done that. Uh, I've had mm, I've had numerous. Now I'm involved with numerous clinics, and each one has a different vision, a different objective. Um, in a nutshell, here's how it goes, okay? If you can keep your overhead low enough, this is just for a research clinic, all right? We're gonna talk about CROs in other videos. I'll get into a little bit of SMOs in this video. Uh, but start with one basic research clinic. You as the owner, uh, provided that there's only one of you, because if there's two owners, 50-50 split, obviously everything just divided by two. But if there's one owner, like me, my first five years, you can easily, easily make $100,000 a year. All you need is like two or three studies for that. And when I say keep your overhead low, I mean you are gonna be needing to do most of the work. So you'll be the coordinator. Yes, you can hire someone else, but you gotta be accountable for every single dollar that you spend. So what I do is hire the MAs to do the blood, vital, those are medical assistants. I train them to become research assistants. They do the blood work, vitals, lab work, all the clinical stuff, then the PI does his or her things, and then I'll do everything else, regulatory, budget, recruitment, running the business, following the SOPs, making sure the protocol is being followed. You can even give the research assistant the, the data entry stuff, but you gotta be doing the queries and the quality assurance. That right there, provided your overhead, keep your overhead low, cost really low, you only need two or three, maybe four studies, depending on what kind of studies you're doing. I was doing psychiatric trials, CNS studies, so those pay a little more. Um, I was making six figures, 100K every year, easily, uh, with three or four studies. And then I eventually started hiring people and I started doing less and less and but building a system. So obviously my cost went up, my overhead went up. I was still making about the same. Now I got in trouble when I started hiring too many people back in 2009 when the industry shifted right after the Great Recession. And the studies just started ending suddenly. And I made the mistake of not letting people go. I had way too much staff. Not laying people off and to compound that, because I thought the industry would rebound quicker than it did. Uh, to compound that, I actually, I was a contrarian, I still am a contrarian, it gets me in trouble at times. Uh, 
as there were fewer studies coming out and a lot of clinics actually were going out of business, I actually expanded into other geographic regions around Southern California. So I opened two more clinics in this downturn and that is when I started losing money. And so I was losing money probably from 2010 to 2012. And I realized my mistake late 2011 or mid 2011. And then I corrected, we downsized, sold some clinics off, merged, restructured different clinics. Uh, so I've, I've seen it all basically. I've been through the acquisition phase as well uh, with one of my sites. So I know what it's like to sell a company, although not for that much money. Um, and one of my colleagues from the, in the past, just to give you uh, the spectrum of what you could be making, uh, one of my colleagues, actually I'll talk about two colleagues, I won't mention their names. Well, the first one I can. California Clinical Trials in 2006 got acquired by Parexcel. So they did a lot of CNS stuff in Southern California, psych studies, and they even had a phase one unit uh, where they did inpatient phase one studies and healthy volunteer trials. They got acquired by Parexcel for $60 million. And this was perfect timing on their part, right before the Great Recession, like in 06. This would have never happened in 2008. If if they would have waited for the Great Recession, the deal would have either never went through or it would have been like 20 million, maybe 15 million, right? Uh, so, and those guys, those are two owners that started California Clinical Trials. And they're MDs, they're both MDs. Um, so this is public knowledge. I was not involved with CCT, but I knew people who worked there at that time. I was actually modeling my company after them because that's when I first got started in research. So obviously like they made huge headlines with that $60 million sale, but that's nothing compared to what these CROs are making. I mean, they make 10, 20 times more than that when they get acquired or when they go IPO. Just look at Quintiles. The, they made their founder, Dennis Gillings, or Gillings a billionaire twice after he won IPO twice so the spectrum is unlimited for most people most people want to know what's realistic for them and unfortunately most people are not cut from the same cloth as those guys I just mentioned uh, it takes a special kind of person to be able to uh, put away immediate satisfaction and gratification for longer term rewards, okay? It's called being stoic. Uh, it takes a special kind of person to do that, and most people have families to support, so what's realistic for you and for a lot of my clients is making six figures a year, passively or actively, whatever you're comfortable with. If you want, if you don't mind rolling up your sleeves and doing all the work, you could probably make 200,000 a year. Um, if you, want to be more laid back and have a few days off every week to spend with the family. You can hire some people, obviously your overhead goes up as long as you're still doing the QA or you have good systems in place, you can make six figures a year easily. Same if you have a few partners. Um, that's not to say you can't lose money because I just showed you the example of my two years in the industry where I lost, I was, I was bleeding cash because uh, I was expanding in a downturn, which is in hindsight foolish, but at the time, I thought the industry would rebound quickly, uh, and it didn't. Uh, but I recovered, so yeah, that's the range. Six figures is not a problem. If you wanna be a millionaire, you either need to follow the mm, California Clinical Trials model, where they started with a small clinic and then expanded into different clinics in their region, uh, combine it with inpatient units where you can do a lot of healthy volunteer studies and phase one trials where you can really make a lot of money off of the bed days then you can make millions I know one group these ones I won't mention but a lot of people know them they do phase one studies and they make uh, their receivables every month are like five million dollars so and there's only two owners there so you can imagine what they're making. Yes, their overhead is high, but they're bringing in five million a year. So you can, 
probably assume they're making six figures every month easily, if not more, the owners. Um, but that takes a lot of sacrifice and investment, and that was not overnight success either. That's like a 10-year project. Uh, and they started getting successful probably in year five. So if you want instant income, start a clinic, uh, hire me as a consultant, obviously, shameless plug. Uh, you need studies, but you don't need that many. And then you need to keep your costs down and give it three to six months till the checks start rolling in, provided you get uh, you hit the ground running with studies as soon as you open, have at least one study, and then start screening and enrolling and randomizing in that one study. Let the checks come in. Uh, you can do six figures, all right? Let me know if you need help or if this helped answer your question. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com and thank you very much for watching. This is Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.